<laughs> oh, hello there. Just reading a little book. Good to see ya. Welcome to um, a video segment series that I'm doing to help you review what we've learned so far in ancient Greece. Let me just pick you up here. Whoa! There we go. I gotcha. So, we are going to review what we have learned so far in ancient Greece. I'm going to do a three-part video series. This first one is all about early Greece and like the beginning, the geography, the stuff we covered at the beginning of the chapter. By the way, this video series is called It's All Greek to Me. Thank you, trademark Mr. Naughton. So step aboard with me, Mr. Naughton. I'm your history teacher for seventh grade, of course. So let's dive in. We're going to talk a little bit about um, the polis, about colonies, and about the military, all in ancient Greece. So to get started, we have some questions for you. As we go through this lesson and we review this content, check either your notes or the PowerPoints that I posted a few weeks back about um, ancient Greece so that when I ask you a question and I tilt my head like that, you can pause the video, you can look at your notes, and you can say, well, Mr. Naughton, the answer is this. Then when I untilt, I'll say, you're right, that's the answer. It's kind of like watching Dora. So let's get started. Look, we're going to go outside to the land of Greece. I'm going to step through my door and teleport to Greece. Oh, there we go. And we're in ancient Greece. Isn't it beautiful? Now, if you're thinking about ancient Greek geography, there's something interesting about their geography here. Across the rest of the year, we learned that all of these major civilizations we've studied in ancient history all started with one feature of geography. They all had one thing in common. But Greece doesn't have that. Look around. What are they missing? They're missing a river valley. Very good. In ancient Greece, there's no major river valley like we studied in the rest of the civilizations. This is going to be a problem for them because look at that, that hill. It's not really good farmland. The Greeks aren't going to be able to do a lot of farming, unlike the rest of the, river, the civilizations built around river valleys that we've studied. So, we know that Greece is surrounded by water. They've got thousands of little islands, and they also have a lot of mountains. That's Greek geography for you. Now, it's surrounded by water on three sides. So, it's a piece of land that comes down, surrounded by water to the west, to the south, and to the east. In the United States, we have Florida, which is also just like this. What is this type of land called? It's called a peninsula. Very good. So a peninsula is a piece of land surrounded by water on three sides, but still connected to the main piece of land. So Greece is a peninsula. Ooh, that's another good question. What's the water that surrounds Greece? This is a body of water. It's a sea called the Mediterranean Sea. Very good. So the Mediterranean Sea surrounds Greece, covers it on three sides, and there's no major rivers. So again, welcome to the wasteland of Greece. So moving on, in ancient Greece, there are two city-states that we're going to study. Just a reminder, we learned about city-states in ancient Mesopotamia, but let's go over it again. A city-state is when there's a city and a state around it. Thank you, I'll be here all week. But no, a city-state is a small form of government where they're not a unified country with the whole area. So even though we're talking about ancient Greece, they're not one whole country. The city-states are all individual groups. That's important to know. So there are two cities that we're gonna look at in particular. One is focused on strength and one is focused on their brains or on wisdom. Which city-state is focused on strength? Which one is focused on brains? Athens is wisdom and Sparta is strength. Very good. So on the island of Crete, one of the earliest civilizations to live there is called the Minoans. The Minoans are a group of Greeks that live on this island. They're not very advanced yet. We're talking thousands and thousands of years ago and they do some important developments like boat building technology. 
Um, they're one of the first groups in Greece to start working with bronze. Ooh, what is bronze made out of? What two elements make bronze? Copper and tin. Very good. So they mix copper and tin to get bronze. The Minoans have it. And then something happens to their civilization that we're not sure about. It could have been a natural disaster like an earthquake. Something happens that they kind of go away. They move out of that region, out of the island of Crete, and they go to the mainland. They meet another group of Greeks there called the Mycenaeans. Mycenaeans are on the mainland of Greece. When we get to the story of the Trojan War in the next Greece chapter, we'll talk more about the Mycenaeans. But long story short, there's these groups living in Greece thousands of years ago. These people called the Dorians from the southern islands come up and they invade, they take over, and it starts a dark age in Greece. We talked a little bit about it, but do you remember what a dark age is? A dark age is when, um, you know, trade declines, ideas, technology aren't doing well, they're not flourishing, and it's just not going well for the ancient Greeks. So they're not, they're not succeeding, they're struggling in ancient Greece during the dark age. We'll learn about how Greece comes out of that dark age later. I just wanted to paint that picture for you in your mind. So next, we have a couple Greek words to go over. If you remember, in class I went like this, and then I made a smaller circle, and then we had a fist. Those are our three ways to remember what we learned about. So let's get started. The big circle is the polis. The polis is the whole city-state. So do it with me. The whole city-state. That's the polis. This is the basic political unit in ancient Greece. That means this is the country, this is where you're born, where you live, where you die. This is where you spend your life, in your polis. Now, if we bring it in closer to the smaller circle, this is the outside area around the hill. So it's the area around the hill. This is a marketplace, a gathering place where people debate issues, they pass laws, Everything government related, they sell stuff there. It's just a hangout spot in ancient Greece, in the city-state. What is that smaller circle called? The Agora. Very good. So we've got the polis, it's the whole city-state. Then we have the Agora, which is like the marketplace, the gathering place around the hill. And then the fist at the top is the Acropolis. This is the fort at the top of the hill. I made it a fist so that you can tell it's strong. It's the fort at the top of the hill. It would be closest to the Olympian gods and also the center of the city-state. be the most protected spot because it's a fort at the top of the hill. You can look up images of the Acropolis at um, Athens. They still have the Parthenon, which is a building that was built on that hilltop in Athens. Um, the next idea I want to go over is colonies. What is a colony? Colony is a place where people move out to settle in a new territory that still belongs to the homeland. So let's do an example here. I've got my pen. Right now I'm sitting on the couch. This couch is ancient Greece. I'm sending out Mr. Pen to live in a colony. All right, Mr. Pen, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Boom. He is now a Greek colony. Because he's not living with me on the couch. He is living on the table. So he is a Greek colony. It's a new settlement, but the pen still belongs to me. Sorry, Mr. Pen. Mr. Pen still belongs to ancient Greece. So even though this is the city-state, this is a new settlement that belongs to me. That's what a colony is. Another example would be when Britain sent people out to the New World, to live in this fancy place called America, they became colonies that belonged to Great Britain until George Washington and those other guys said, no, 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 no thank you. So colonies is how the U.S. started off. We started off as British colonies. The Greeks are known for colonizing a lot of different places around the Mediterranean. If you think back to my map in my classroom, I drew that all around the Mediterranean. They have ports and little cities along the coast all over. This is going to be really important down the road when we study ancient Rome because there's already so many Greeks living all around the Mediterranean. That's going to really impact a few people down the road we learn about. 
So we have Greeks living all over the Mediterranean, and it's kind of like a relationship. When the colonies have something, they trade it back to their homeland, to the home cities, and in return, the home cities give stuff to the colonies. So some of the things that the colonies would give to the parent city include grains, metals, timber, and unfortunately, enslaved people as well. The colonists would fight people, and if they would conquer them, they would send them back as slaves to the home cities, the parent cities. Now, the parent cities in return would send expensive goods like wine, olive oil, pottery, artistic kind of stuff, or food and supplies out to the colonies. Now, to wrap things up, we have to talk a little bit about the military. So, I need some things to gear up. First thing we need, I need a helmet. Ugh. There we go. Okay, got my helmet. Got my short sword. Good. There we go. I've got my shield. Now, if you notice, in ancient Greece, they would have round shields. I'm sorry, but this was the best I could do. So, in ancient Greece, they would have a short, a short sword. They would have their helmet. They would be covered in armor. They would have their shield. And then lastly, they would have a spear. This is a long spear that they would use in battle. So we have all of their, all their supplies, have all the stuff ready to go. Let's talk about how the ancient Greeks would fight in warfare. So before we talk about how they would fight, we got to talk about their name. What was the name for a Greek citizen soldier who defended the city-state? A hoplite. Very good. So today, I am a hoplite. Hoplites were citizen soldiers who defended their city-state. So anytime the city-state would come under attack or they would declare war, the hoplites would be the ones who would fight the battles. So they are armed with the shield, the sword, and the long spear. Without further ado, let's get into formation. Ho! Oh, hoplites, form the formation! <sighs> so, they would gather together with their shields. I'm actually going to put my camera down for a little bit, that way I can show you. So, they would gather with their shields in their left hand. They would link together and crowd behind their shields, shoulder to shoulder. So imagine there's like ten of me. Sorry, we don't have a good special effects budget. So they would get behind their shields and they would stick out their spears. Now, these long spears would give them really good reach so that they could defend themselves long distance from soldiers who'd be attacking. So that's what the spears were good for. Again, when they would form the shield wall with their shields, then they would be able to easily defend off invaders. So they would have the spears. If the enemy tried to come running at them, they would, like, use their spears to fight them back. But say the spear got broken and the enemy got in close. That's when they would draw their short sword to fight back the enemy if they got close. So these weapons and these tools were really well thought out, really well developed. What is the name of this strategy, this formation of hoplites gathered around together? What is the name? It's a phalanx. Very good. Phalanx, group of soldiers that would come together, shoulder to shoulder. They would use their long spears and their short swords to defend each other. So it was a defensive position. It was not offensive. They wouldn't go charging like that. They would be gathered together to defend themselves. So that's a phalanx. If you have any questions about any of the material that I have gone over in this lesson, please feel free to email me. My email is jnaughton at epasd.org. I think that covers everything in lesson one, which again was early Greece, colonies, the military, and geography. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Hope you had some fun watching uh, my little lesson. And remember, it's all Greek to me.